This week's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash DJ Force X. There are over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. This episode of the DJ Force X podcast is proudly sponsored by Fixed. Fixed is a fan and artist-friendly independent record label that specializes in hybrid electronic rock. It's home to the likes of Cell Dweller, Blue Starly, I Will Never Be The Same, Witchy Nicks, The Algorithm, Voicians, See The Akira, and a whole bunch more. Check out their latest label sampler for just one dollar at their official store, FixedStore.com. That's F-I-X-T store.com. Save 10% off your first order by using my coupon code FORCEX. That's F-O-R-C-E-X. They have loads of shirts, hoodies, stickers, posters, and many other accessories for all their artists. And this is available worldwide with fantastic international shipping rates to go with that. So head over to fixstore.com and check them out. And don't forget, use my coupon code FORCEX. Hello and welcome to the DJ Force X podcast episode 60. And this is actually uh, probably the two year anniversary of this show as well. So um, it's a double whammy. So I've hit a nice round number of 60 and it's the two year anniversary of having this podcast in effect. Um, and what a great way to kick off this 60th episode is with an interview with one of my favorite all time bands, um, Candiria. Uh, I've got John, the guitarist, um, who was uh, gracious enough um, to have an interview with myself. They're currently uh, pushing their new album while they were sleeping, uh, which is actually out now via Metal Blade. Um, so yeah, check that out. It's a fantastic album. It takes you on a complete journey, uh, not just of genres, but a, a, a whole story running through the album. And it's, it's fantastic. I love this band. I saw them back in... Uh, 2002, I think we talk about this in the interview, but uh, in Brighton in England, uh, they were supporting Clutch uh, with Lamb Wayne Spring as well in there, if anyone who remembers those guys. Um, but yeah, it was a fantastic show that totally turned me on to the band. Uh, just their mix of hip-hop, jazz, and metal, hardcore. It was it was fantastic. Uh, anyway, um, again, thank you for listening. And uh, yeah, don't forget to rate and review my podcast, all that kind of good stuff. Use my sponsors, get some discounts coming up to the Christmas season. Uh, use my fixed discount. Uh, use my audible one if you like an audio book anything like that be awesome uh just to help this show grow a little bit anyway i'm gonna let you get on with this interview not gonna keep you much longer so this is john from candiria enjoy So welcome to my show this week. I have John from the band Candiria. Welcome, John. Hey, how are you? I am good. I am good. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. I'm just working um, and uh, doing work for Candiria, doing work for my record label today. Excellent. So, you know, a day in a life. Awesome. Awesome. Sounds, <laughs> that sounds really good. <laughs> Better than my day. Anyway. Um, <laughs> cool. So, uh, yeah, you're joining me today. Uh, you, uh, Candiria uh, got a new album out. Um, it's called While They Were Sleeping. Uh, it right. came out a few weeks ago um, right. on there. It's out on Metal Blade Records, uh, which is awesome. Uh, first up, it's a great album. Um, Thank you. I love it. It's uh, I first got into you guys a very long time ago. Um, I actually went to the first time I saw you guys was um, back in 2002 uh, oh. in England. Uh, oh, fantastic. <laughs> uh, you were touring with Clutch at the time. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. Uh, that was a great tour. Me and my bandmates at the time went down to uh, Brighton, which I think was one of the last dates on that tour. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, we saw you guys there. And, and it was the first time I was kind of exposed to you on a live front. Mm-hmm. And it was fantastic. Just Thank you. Just throwing that out there. I know it was like almost 15 years ago, but you know, right. it's, uh, it's awesome to have you guys um, still producing music. Um, Thanks. Because back then I got the album, uh, was it 300%? uh density is that the one right yeah um because i was i was writing for a couple of zines and uh century media used to send me promos cool 
And uh, yeah, that was one of them. And that was the kind of like, it was around the same time we went to go see you. And uh, yeah, no, I've just love you guys ever since. And uh, thank you. I thank you. I appreciate it. That fusion of sound that you have, that kind of, I know you call it urban fusion. Um, right. But for those who haven't heard you, it's kind of a mix of rock, hardcore, and uh, jazz, if you will. So, um, yeah. Sure. Yeah. We, I mean, that's pretty much it. We, we, we do consider hip hop an influence as well. Uh, Carly's vocal style mm. is, is definitely hip hop influenced, yes. even though he's screaming. The way he um, weaves out of in and out of rhythm or or against rhythm, and the way he um, sort of you know s- structures his 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 um, his phrasing is really the hip hop influence, even though it doesn't sound like hip hop. No, you know? no, but I could I could definitely hear that there. It's uh, yeah, but it, it works so well as as a as a combination of of sounds um, that I haven't heard anything quite like it without being like too off the wall. Um, mm-hmm. Like you got some of like. Um, uh, like so, some of Mike Patton's side side uh, side bands and stuff, and it kind of has all those kind of elements, but it's kind of like block here, block here, block here. Where you guys, it kind of seamlessly like a seamless transition, if you will. So, well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Cool. No, thank you for for bringing that to us. It's a it's a great sound. <laughs> um, cool. So, uh, so yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about the album. Um, like I said, it's called while uh, while you were sleeping. Um, while they were while they were sleeping. While yes. they were sleeping. Sorry. Yeah. That's okay. no problem um but yeah uh tell me about the album um like is is there a is there a common theme running through it or is each song it's kind of like uh own entity if you will um there is a lyrical concept which is a first for for us mm-hmm. um we've never done anything like that before um the lyrical concept is something that carly began working on in the very early stages of the writing process for this album um Actually, the, the, I would say the second phase of the writing process for this album, because there was a some of the some of the music dates back to 2010, okay. uh, like one or two songs, one, two and a half songs, I'd say okay. um, dates back that far. And uh, but the, the, when we really got serious about making this record, um, that's when he began. Uh, he was he Carly was um, was independently studying um, character development and um, and uh, uh, how do you, um, and writing screenplays. Okay. He's uh, he's very interested in, in in character development, screenplays, and filmmaking. So um, that became sort of the I guess the, um, the the starting point of his interest in writing a, a concept for this album. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and so so there is everything. Uh, every song is a, I guess you would call it a, a sort of a. Um, he calls them chapters or 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 sort of like um, uh, story points. I guess you could call them. Yeah. Uh, but but the the album unfolds, and to me, it reads or 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 um, feels more like a graphic novel than anything else, which is what I think he was going for, and I think. I think uh, the artwork really um, plays into that really well, in my opinion. And uh, I really do feel it's like everything kind of happened serendipitously and, and just came together nicely. Um, and by the by the time we were in the recording studio, he had finished the, the, the concept and the storyline. And, and it wasn't until I heard the album in sequence that I fully understood what he was doing. Yeah. I fully, and that's what I really enjoyed about it because I didn't under, I didn't, I, like I understood kind of the basic idea of what was happening, but until I heard it in sequence, the names and the, and the way the story unfolded, I did not see that. And, um, I'm, I really give Carly a lot of credit for, um, for really sticking to his guns and, and pushing the band to believe in him and which we did. And we supported him 100%. And and knowing that this is how it was going to unfold and and work out that way, so so props to Carly. Yeah, excellent. I mean, like, I, the only reason I brought that question up is that I felt there was some kind of flow in the album, and mm-hmm. there, there was definitely a development. in, you know, you listen to everything that's going on, and it, it yeah, it does. It has a it does have a life. So um, yeah, props, props to him on that. It's uh, <laughs> it was a fantastic. Uh, it's a fantastic album. Again, you know, I love thank it. you. <laughs> it's been thank on, you very it's, much. It's been on heavy rotation in my household. So. <laughs> that's great. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. I'm happy to hear that. Excellent. No, that's cool. Um, so, um, uh, with this album, this is your uh, eighth album. Is that correct? I believe. Yeah, I believe you're eighth right. Studio. Eighth, eighth studio album. Yeah. yeah. 
So uh, obviously in that time, you were quite um, prolific in releasing some stuff um, up until your unfortunate auto accident, which uh, was well documented. We don't have to go into that. People can find out on that front. Um, But then obviously you guys came back together um, and you're sort of spacing out the albums now. Is that the general um, like uh, plan on that and then and then tour them heavily? Or are you looking to be more like you were prolific with releasing material? I think we I think the I think we would like to be even more prolific um with with releasing material. Mm. Um there's already been conversation about working on another record. Okay. <laughs> I, I think that's a little I think I think I think the excitement is I think just everyone is excited about the process of of writing and releasing a record. And um the response has been so great that I think everybody's like, "Well, now cool, now let's do this." And I do know that there's there's going to be a, a little bit of time, a, a lot of time probably before we do really get into that again. Um, but no, the plan really is to be as prolific as we used to be. Um, and and I think everyone in the band agrees that um, we'd like to be even more. Um, we would like to do collaborations with other bands. We'd like to do uh, EPs and and you know, revisit some of the material and maybe remix some songs or, you know, get, just just be creative because that's what this is. We're, we're a creative band. Candiria is a creative band and, and we are happiest when we are being creative. I think we're a more creative band than we are performers. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Although I, I, I do feel performance is a major part of what we do and we all love performing very, very much. But we really are, I think we're happiest and we are at... We're we're in our most natural state when we're creating and when we're recording an album and and inspiring each other and producing each other and I think that's 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 really why um, I think this record uh, came out as well as it did um, in my opinion because uh, because it felt so good to get back in the studio and really work together and focus on on creating something that we all loved and we're psyched to get behind. Nice, nice. Yeah. That's also. I mean, do you have any plans to tour? I know you got a few dates coming up, but. Um... Anything more extensive than that? I mean, we are we're gonna do everything, man. We we're, we we have there's we're talking about. We already have um, some an offer, and I'm not sure if it's gonna work out or not. But there already was an offer on the table to come out to the UK and to Europe. Oh, nice! And the minute the minute <laughs> we get <laughs> we get the opportunity opportunity to come back to the UK and and Europe, we're going to do it. The minute with the minute we can make that work, we're going to do it. Cool. Um, yeah, we do. I mean, the long and short, the short of it is, um, we really do want to get back out to to Europe. We want to get back to the UK. We want to get back to Japan. Um, and this first run in November is is really going to be the first time we've 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 jumped in a van and gotten away from the city and gotten back out. And I know that's just going to get everybody super psyched, even more so than we already are to, to, to do more and more touring. Um, it is going to be a little bit more difficult. We, we, we can't just say yes to everything. I mean, yeah. there's at this point, we all have families and, and, and other aspects of our lives that we have to continue to work on or we won't be able to pay rent and all of that stuff. But, um, but yes, touring is definitely an, a, a major part of, of the agenda for this, for this album cycle and for the relationship we have with, uh, with metal blade. Yes. Um, yeah. Now that we have the right team behind us, we have management now, we have a great booking agent, we have we have um you know, we have Metal Blade behind us and it's just it's just unfolding. We just got a we just got a European booking agent actually. So Oh fantastic. Um, yeah. And we're I'm pretty sure I can say this. I don't think I would be upsetting anyone by saying this, but I we're gonna be at Hellfest okay, in, cool. in in this summer coming in two thousand seventeen. So we'll be there nice. for that um so so yeah <laughs> excellent well that's good news for the for my european counterparts uh cool, i know a few of them are fans of yours so it'll be uh they'll probably be getting tickets for that and uh going to see you but um i'm hoping you come down here to tampa because that's where i'm based currently so great great yeah yeah um, we we plan on we we'll, we do plan on coming down south and, and as a matter of fact i think I think if we don't go to Europe, there is uh, there is some conversation about us doing more U.S. dates, and then I think there's in that conversation there was like a few Florida dates. Cool. So, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, across the board, we're 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 gonna do everything we can to get to as many cities as we can um, for this album cycle because you know the 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 thing is is this you know your reaction to the album is 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 really been uh that's you know a lot of people are excited about the record and 
and our fans are excited about it, which is super important because, you know, there, we have those fans that are like, oh, it's not surrealistic madness and uh, what the hell. And, you know, <laughs> we're never going to make that record again. No. And we're never going to be that band again. We don't want we have no interest in making a record like that again. Mm. Um, although, you know, we there are things about it that we do appreciate and love, but we want to do other stuff. We made, you know, f- f- so many records like that. And we feel this direction that we're going in right now is the perfect balance of what the band always has been and what we, you know, what we want to do now. Yeah. No, we, can't, we can't express everything we want to do. We can't express <laughs> every idea with one, you know, that, that death, death metal style vocal. We just cannot express yeah. the, the full gamut that we would like to express and, and function in and work in um, and with, with using that one, you know, we had to broaden our, our horizons in that regard. Yeah, so. right. definitely, definitely. I mean, with some of the tracks on the album, I, I really like, um, the first one I heard was uh, Maria. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was the first track that, that was sent to me to, to sample. And uh, it was a great track. And then I, I got the album. Um, and then the other tracks uh, with Broken Bones. Um, mm-hmm. opaque which again it's a, it's a total change of pace on mm-hmm. what you're saying you know it is yeah it's a slower song it's more melo- it's very melodic um mm-hmm. uh behind these walls as well which is kind of a bit more uh you know a bit more hardcore on that front as well so it's kind of it's, right. it's a, like i say at the start it's a great mix and it mm-hmm. does it takes you through a whole gambit of 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 genres and story side like storytelling and things like that so well, that's awesome. I'm glad you appreciate it. I'm glad you really enjoy it. And uh, as a matter of fact, um, Opaque was, was really something we, you know, once again, it was something that Carly pushed for. And he really was like, listen, I want to do something like this. He played us a song by an artist he's been listening to. And he said, I, I really want to touch upon something like this because we need, you know, really what was happening there is he was explaining to us what was happening in the story. Yeah. And he said, this, at, at this point in the song, this is where this happens and this happens. Um, and he said, we need to express that in a, in a certain way. It can't be, it can't be metal. It can't be this. It has to be, it's gotta be emotional. It's gotta have this emotional weight to it. Yep. And, um, we've never done that before. It was a really interesting thing to do was to be, was for a lyrical content to be the inspiration for what the music sounded like. So that was a really interesting challenge and a really, um, a really great experience because it worked out to be one of our favorite tracks on the record. Um, that is so completely different than anything we've ever done. Mm-hmm. And every fan we speak to is like, "Opaque, man, what a cool, what a great song! It works." And um, and the cool, uh, the last cool thing about it is, um, is my girlfriend is the uh, the guest vocalist on that, Andrea Horn. I was actually gu- I was actually going to ask who the who the female vocals was on that. So yeah, uh, yeah, awesome. and Andrea Horn from from the van of uh, the band Voreen. Okay, um, which was an awesome band. They're about to put out an EP. And they're just they're just great, and she's so talented. She also played uh, she also played the flute on um, Wandering Light in that mellow break. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, um, yeah, she's super talented, and they're a talented band. And everyone should check out Voreen. It's it's like Maureen but with a V. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean they're they're very different. They're they're more in the realm of like uh, the Breeders, Sonic Youth, Nirvana. You know, they're doomy and shoegazy, and it's really, really cool band. But but if you're looking for techie metal, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, it may not be the best thing, but <laughs> yeah, but but they're they're awesome all the same. Cool. Well, yeah. I'll check them out, and I'll encourage my listeners to as well. So Cool. Thanks. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, no worries. So it's uh, Voreen, V-O-R-E-E-N. It's V-A-U-R-E-E-N. Sorry, V-A-U. So I'll get the name right, and then R-E-E-N. E. Yeah, yeah, two E's. Two E's, right. Then. All right, cool. I, I've just written that down. So, yeah. No, I'll cool, cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've got a couple of questions left for you. Uh, sure. Just sort of, uh, these are the questions I ask pretty much every artist I interview. Uh, they kind of like think pieces, but, you know, you might be able to rack them off real quick or give them right. some thought. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so, yeah, uh, your three top albums. So, uh, we're talking albums that have kind of influenced you into the, the person stroke musician that you are now. Hmm. All right. I got to start with, uh, I got to start with Black Sabbath's Paranoid. Nice. Yep. <laughs> because, because I learned how to play guitar. Um, I, when I was a kid and I started playing guitar, um, I bought the Black Sabbath anthology book. It was like the first real heavy metal band I ever got into. Um, and my dad had, uh, I think somebody in my family had the first Black Sabbath album and my dad 
was fine with me blasting that through the house. So that was my first real love. And Tony Iommi's guitar playing, especially particularly in Planet Caravan, was a really still to this day is is still an, an extremely inspiring guitar solo yeah. for me. So as a guitar player, that was really important. Um, I will say um, I will also include because I just saw them live uh, for their 20 year anniversary tour for their album Fantastic Planet. Um, I will definitely say Greg Edwards from Failure um, as a guitar player. Um, he really had a huge influence on my playing and my songwriting and um, the way, you know what I mean? Just yeah. being a sound, uh, you know, it, not being so much a guitar soloist, but being someone who creates sound and atmosphere and, and sort of designs sound with guitar. Um, so he was very influential. Um I mean, I can name names all day, man. Uh, <laughs> but you're only giving me three. I'm only giving uh, you three. You're only giving me three. All right. Uh, all right. I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'll say. I guess I'll say Nels Klein. Nels Klein. Um, he's he's a jazz guitar player uh -huh. for the most part. Experimental jazz, avant-garde, weird. Um, just an incredible guitar player, and I think if I strive to do any like to sound like anyone or to emulate someone's style or or the spirit of their playing, if I that's the way to put it. Mm -hmm. If there's someone's, um, uh, I guess if I'm if I try to emulate someone's the spirit of what they're all about and how they create sound and solo, it would be like someone like Nels Klein. Um, and I'm just going to throw this in there because I'm, you know, uh, Mark Rabot as well. He's another one. But anyway, okay. you only gave me three. So, so let's right. go with Nels, Nels Klein. Uh, I would say check out the album Sad if you've never heard of Nels Klein. Okay. Uh, the Nels Klein singers or the Nels Klein trio, just check out N-E-L-S-C-L-I-N-E. -E, and there's an album called Sad. There, there's so many amazing records. I mean, he's just an incredible musician, and his band is amazing. It's like really furious, like noisy, messed up jazz. It's great. Excellent, excellent. I'll check yeah. that out. I enjoy a bit of jazz, so it's uh, cool. Always good cool, to man. hear. Um, I may have already heard them. I kind of just put uh, like a thing on uh, shuffle, and it just goes through oh. so much different music. So um, I'll check. I'm going to check my uh, my collection. So. <laughs> cool. cool, man. Cool. Yeah. Um, so what are your hobbies away from music? So when you're not writing for Candy, or I know you mentioned you had a record label as well, um, mm -hmm. but what, what are your, if you have time for hobbies, uh, what what are they? Um, I don't really have, I wouldn't say I have time for hobbies at this point, but um, I do love, I do love collecting records. I love colored vinyl. I love like, I love all, I love vinyl. I love, I love the, the format and I love, um, I'm, I'm, ex I'm like a big, I'm like a big kid when it comes to like, you know, finding cool records online. And, you know, I love that. Um, I love uh, everything that I'm involved with is always re it's somehow related, connected to music or somehow it connects to music. I also love photography and, and making like amateur little films and stuff like that. And um, I'm interested in in uh, scoring films. I'd, I'd love to do more of that. I've done a little tiny bit of it in the past bunch of years, and I'd love to do a lot more. Um, I love cooking. Uh, I don't, I, I won't, I won't, I don't consider myself a chef by any means, uh, or a cook because those guys really work way harder than I ever have in a kitchen. Um, but I do enjoy cooking, uh, and eating and I love, um, I don't know. I like my cat. She's cool. cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's I about it. Excellent. Well, that's quite a few things to get on there. So, um, yeah. So uh, I was just going to recommend, actually, if you love vinyl, uh, if you ever come down to this area of Tampa uh, okay. or, or even St. Petersburg, there is a fantastic record store called uh, Banana Music. Um, Banana. And, it, and it has a huge warehouse full of just just wall-to-wall -wall vinyl. So wow. If you love digging and, and just kind of looking. Um, oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, I love it. If you do find yourself, you know, obviously down here, kill some time. Um, mm -hmm. it's in St. Pete, which is obviously next to, which is next to, ta uh, Tampa, but, um, cool. yeah, like, if check it out, it's, uh, it, uh, it's just like, I go there as much as I can, um, mm -hmm. especially on like, I mean, I go there on record store day as well to kind of celebrate that, but it's, uh, um, oh. it, I, I collect vinyl as well. So cool. Cool. It's do like, they, is it most, do they get new stuff in or is it just mostly old vinyl? Uh, they get new stuff in. 
uh, but okay, they, they have a lot of old stuff as well. Um, right, like, which I, guess... I don't mind, but but I like I like when they also have newer bands and and newer music to listen oh, yeah. to. That, yes, no, I, exactly... I go there. I pick it like I say. I go to Record Store Day. They they get in the stuff for that. Um, cool. But they also have like every week they have the new releases out. Um, oh, that's great. So bands that are either reissuing or actually releasing something new on vinyl. You know, it's great to go down there and and just sort of. I love the smell of record stores. So. Yeah. I do too. I agree with you, man. Being an old school DJ and stuff as well. So it kind of plays into my, my field on that front. So Cool, man. Uh, sure. Where can people reach you? Where's the best place to hit Candiria up? Uh, I would say, well, because I run the Facebook page. Oh, okay. Um, and I, I'd say, honestly, Facebook is a great way to get in touch with us. Um, uh, I mean, to, to hear about new, new what's happening with the band and everything like that, we really are pretty we're pretty present on Facebook right now. We're also present on, on Instagram, but to actually reach the band, I would say hit us up on Facebook and I usually get through all the messages and try to get back to as many people as possible. Okay, cool. Um, so that would be the best way, I guess. All right, cool. Well, and, um, awesome. So that's, uh, uh, facebook.com forward slash Candiria band. Or yeah. Is, yeah. Cool. Yep. Sure. Sure, man. Excellent. All right, cool. Well, John, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, I'm a big fan of the band, so this has been great for me. <laughs> thank, you so, thank you so much. I appreciate it, man. I really do. Cool. Um, so, yeah, good luck with the album, uh, which is out now on Metal Blade Records. Um, and it's available via all good stockists. That's called mm-hmm. While They Were Sleeping. Uh, so mm-hmm. you can get it online. You can get physical copies via the Metal Blade. Um, are you doing a vinyl version? Yeah, th- there's a vinyl version up. Uh, it's actually a vinyl version up on my on my store in my store right now. Okay, uh, risingpulse.com. That's my record label. Okay, Rising Pulse. So, if, yeah. yeah, if folks wanted to pick up some vinyl, they can go to the v- vinyl for the new record. You can check out my site. That would be awesome. And uh, you know the the band. You know the the well, it doesn't matter. Buy it from Metal Blade. <laughs> buy it from us. But you know it'd be nice to you know have some folks hit me up and sell, sell some records you know yeah. that's always a good thing excellent excellent well again john thank you very much um i'll let you go on with the rest of your day and uh yeah like i said good luck with the album and i hope to hear you i hope to see you guys soon down this way uh touring. thank you so much and, absolutely um, man. yeah have a good one man all right thank you thank you